From 250 to 66 million years ago, the dolphins, porpoises, and whales of the sea were actually reptiles? <laughs> so no dolphins and other cetaceans didn't actually evolve from marine reptiles of the Mesozoic, but they did evolve to refill a niche in the ocean that was actually filled first by reptiles. In other words, reptiles were the trendsetters and dolphins and other cetaceans are just kind of bringing back this go back into water trend that the reptiles did first. But what exactly were these marine reptiles like? How similar were they to marine mammals in the ocean today? And how successful were they? And why did they go extinct? And why didn't they re-evolve to go back into the sea and fill this same niche in Cenozoic oceans? Why did mammals take over this role? So in the Mesozoic, from around 252 to 66 million years ago, some reptiles went from land to water, just like marine mammal ancestors did in the Cenozoic era. At this time in the Mesozoic, a diverse group of marine reptiles thrived in roles that are now occupied by marine mammals. In some of the major players, the marine reptiles that played significant roles in marine ecosystems at this time included ichthyosaurs, which were kind of these dolphin-like marine reptiles in the Mesozoic, plesiosaurs, which were kind of these long-necked, almost Loch Ness monster type marine reptiles that really don't have a modern analog, mosasaurs, which were the dominant scary apex predators like the megalodon equivalent of the Mesozoic seas, and they actually are used as this dominant apex predator reference in movies like Jurassic World, which show them like kind of jumping up out of the water and killing the bad dinosaur and stuff and they were huge and terrifying so it's not like totally inaccurate <laughs> and then we had placodonts which were kind of turtle-like and you know superficial features uh but they weren't you know directly related to turtles in any way they did have like a beak-like mouth for eating things this thing says shell i mistyped i think i was on turtles at that moment and i i didn't mean to type that placodonts did not have shells uh, but turtles were also around as early as the mesozoic and they were probably occupying similar niches or ecological roles as they do today as modern sea turtles do but they didn't all have shells and the ones that did couldn't pull their bodies completely into their shells yet, so the shell part was still developing. So what were the time ranges of these marine reptiles slash sea monster type things in the Mesozoic? <laughs> so ichthyosaurs went from the early Triassic to late Cretaceous, almost the entire Mesozoic era, um, and they underwent significant morphological changes throughout their existence, and I'll show some of their morphological diversity or their different body forms in later slides. Plesiosaurs it didn't evolve until the Jurassic, after the Triassic, um, but they did go all the way to the end of the Cretaceous and went extinct at the KPG or Cretaceous Paleogene boundary around 66 million years ago when the asteroid hit and killed all the non-avian dinosaurs as well. Plesiosaurs also had diverse body forms, which we'll show later, and uh, they had some that were long-necked types and some that were short-necked, so they kind of went the whole range of body types there. Mosasaurs, the big scary apex predator guys, actually only lived from the late Cretaceous to the end Cretaceous, so a pretty short time range um, for these highly successful marine predators, meaning that it was pretty impressive that they became so successful and such apex type predators in such a short time range. Placodonts only lived in the Triassic period, but they lived pretty much the entire period from 250-ish to 200-ish million years ago, and they were blunt-toothed shell crushers with broad armored bodies that probably occupied roles similar to that of modern walruses or seals. And they also had like major diversity when it came to morphology. There were some really crazy different forms of placodons out there. So what exactly were the similarities with modern day marine mammal life other than the fact that they, you know, evolved to play similar ecological roles as marine mammals do today? Well, ichthyosaurs are often referred to as the dolphins of the Mesozoic due to their similar appearance and obviously ecological role. They had streamlined bodies, flippers, and tails, making them really great swimmers you know, sound familiar? <laughs> and they were highly successful and diverse. Again, 
morphological diversity is a common trait among all these types of marine reptiles in the Mesozoic. Ichthyosaurs specifically range from around 1 to over 20 meters in length. Let's just think about that for a second. <laughs> 20 meters? I don't know the exact conversion for you Americans like myself out there, but I think it's like over 65 feet, which is just, it's huge. It's huge. They're, they were huge. But there were also smaller forms similar to, you know, more modern dolphin type sizes. And this convergent evolution of this form is likely due to the adaptation of a similar aquatic lifestyle. So just to explain that sentence for a second, convergent evolution is when two fully separate lineages evolve kind of a similar characteristic. For example, birds evolve to fly, bats evolve to fly, bats are mammals, they're completely different than birds and they evolve to fly at a completely different time than birds did, but flying is a really beneficial trait to have. You can either hunt prey from above or fly away from it from below. <laughs> and that is beneficial all around. So flying has convergently evolved in many different lineages throughout Earth's history. And clearly, a dolphin-like role and body form within the ocean is also really beneficial because it's evolved in these two separate lineages, reptiles first and then mammals, at two separate times in Earth's history. And this was again likely due to this specific aquatic lifestyle that they were filling. In terms of behavior, fossils can't tell us everything, but their skeletons do suggest that they were active swimmers capable of fast bursts of speed and agile maneuvering based on kind of their tails and body shapes. They also had really large and well-developed eyes to locate and pursue prey. Their eyes in some pictures or reconstructions of them look like bug eyes. I mean, it looks really creepy and kind of crazy, almost alien-like, and like it wasn't real, but seriously, their eyes were huge. And this is likely pointing to a difference though with modern marine mammals, such as dolphins. You know, dolphins have somewhat regular sized eyes and they use echolocation. Whereas we can't tell with fossils whether ichthyosaurs used echolocation, but based on these huge eyes, it's likely that they mostly used visual cues to hunt their prey. They also likely fed on fish and other small marine organisms, similar to modern dolphins, but ichthyosaurs are different from dolphins in many ways. For example, they were reptiles, not mammals. <laughs> That's the big one. <laughs> um, they also reached sizes much larger than dolphins in many cases, like I showed um, before. Uh, but it's important to note that even though they were reptiles, they didn't maintain all reptilian features that their reptile cousins on land had. For example, oxygen isotope ratios within their bones, their fossil bones, suggests that their body temperatures were much warmer than surrounding water, which means that they were probably, at least partially, or some species may be fully endothermic rather than ectothermic. Most reptiles, as we know today, are, you know, quote-unquote cold-blooded or ectothermic, and therefore they can't heat their body temperatures above surrounding temperatures. Um, so the fact that these guys could and were at least partially endothermic really helped them be able to have energy for long-distance swimming, even in colder waters. Also because they were reptiles, some species laid eggs, but other species actually did evolve to give birth to live young. And we actually have fossilized evidence of this, which I think is really crazy, but incredible that we have these fossils out there. But another major difference between them and dolphins today is their vertical, more shark-like or fish-like tails than horizontal dolphin-like tails. This also might have meant that they swam more like sharks, kind of just lurking there, swimming, you know, straight across, and less like jumpy, playful dolphins swim. But we can't say for sure that they didn't jump out of the water. It's just that they had this different tail shape that might have made them swim differently. Moving on to plesiosaurs and their similarities with modern day life, Basically, this slide says differences because they don't really have any similarities with modern marine mammals. This is the one group of marine reptiles that really doesn't have like a, oh, it's just like this today. Um, maybe like killer whales, but at the same time, they have really long necks. And I don't know, unless the Loch Ness Monster is real, they really don't <laughs> have any modern analogs, and this makes them pretty different than anything living today. They had four paddle-like limbs to efficiently swim through the water, sharp teeth for catching and eating prey, and diverse body forms. Again, they had long-necked, 
short necked, and they reached up to 12 meters or 40 feet in length. Some of the short necked forms actually look almost more like mosasaurs than plesiosaurs. They had a lot of diverse body forms, but this also really helped them with their success because then they could live in diverse ecosystems. Based on their skeletal structures, they were likely efficient swimmers as well, preying on fish, squid, small invertebrates, and even other small reptiles. Moving on to mosasaurs, these were the apex predators, and therefore they filled roles similar to killer whales or sharks today. They fed on fish, ammonites, and nautiloids, and even other marine reptiles. They also had streamlined bodies that got up to 17 meters or 56 feet in length, and paddle-like limbs that allowed them to efficiently move through the water. But they kind of had more differences than modern whales or sharks than they did similarities. For example, they were reptiles again, uh, meaning that some species did lay eggs. But there is evidence that some did give live birth, just like ichthyosaurs. But it's also likely, based on their skeletal fossils, that they didn't have the deep diving abilities that many whales and sharks possess today. Instead, their swimming and hunting behaviors were likely more surface oriented. That being said, it's not fully known whether they could jump out of the water like great whites do in pursuit of their prey, similar to how Jurassic World depicted them. But as reptiles, they did have to surface to breathe. So maybe they jumped out of the water like this, but also if it was so huge, it would have had to have like a big tail to help that along. And most forms or most reconstructions of mosasaur seem to have more like a small tapering tail that could probably just swim rather than jumping out of the water or propelling them out of the water since they were so dang huge. But, you know, who knows? Placodonts, although they were turtle-like in some of their body morphologies or body shapes, they are not directly related to true turtles. True turtles were also around already in the Mesozoic, and again, they likely occupied roles similar to that of modern turtles. But early turtles were much more elongate, and again, they couldn't pull their limbs completely into their shells like many modern turtles can. Another major difference between modern cetaceans, including whales, dolphins, and porpoises, is that marine reptiles evolved from different lineages, whereas cetaceans today evolved from one common ancestor that came from land into the ocean. There are different non-cetacean marine mammals that came from different ancestors, but cetaceans themselves did come from one walking whale, per se. In terms of the marine reptile ancestors, ichthyosaurs likely came from reptiles on land that were similar to Hupposuchus, I, I don't know if I'm saying that right, or uh, Mesosaurus, which were these kind of semi-aquatic paddle foot like reptiles that went into the water and became more fully aquatic over time with, you know, fins evolving into ichthyosaur like fins. Plesiosaurs came from diapsid reptiles, which is a group that includes dinosaurs, crocodiles, and birds. And mosasaurs came from monitor lizards that adapted to an aquatic lifestyle. There's even some depiction of them within the water being fully aquatic mosasaurs with their little like lizard-like tongue sticking out. And I, that, I don't know if that stayed through the evolution of mosasaurs, but that's so cool. But what factors led to the great success and dominance of these marine reptiles? Well, one is their adaptations for efficient swimming, maneuverability, and hunting. They all had really streamlined body forms that really allowed them to swim really efficiently and fast. And this was likely in part due to the fact that they just diversified so dang much that, you know, some of those body forms were bound to do well because they had so many different types of body forms. They also occupied niches that were relatively unoccupied at that time or when they were evolving. This is because right before the Mesozoic at the PT or Permian-Triassic boundary, there was the greatest extinction of all time, the Great Dying, which caused the extinction of lots of marine organisms, which kind of opened a lot of niches for things like marine reptiles to take over. Especially because land life, although it was hit hard, wasn't hit quite as hard as marine life in, well, almost any extinction event, but the Permian-Triassic event as well. So when reptiles on land in the Mesozoic were like, hey, look, there's an ocean there and lots of things are gone. <laughs> so maybe we should take that over. Another factor leading to their success was their diverse body forms. Again, this led to incredible ecological specialization and many different roles that they played in the ecosystems with their different body forms. 
that allowed them to adapt to various habitats, including open ocean, coastal areas, and shallow waters. They also had a lot of evolutionary innovation within their groups that enabled them to feed in new and efficient ways that hadn't really been done before. For example, the long necks of plesiosaurs that enhanced their reach and feeding strategies. And there was a relative lack of competitors during their time ranges because there weren't any marine mammals yet and there was a lack of advanced fish, again, especially after that major extinction event. Given this major success that they had, it's possible or even probable that they never would have been replaced by marine mammals had the asteroid not hit at the end of the Cretaceous. But it did, and along with the non-avian dinosaurs, these marine reptiles went extinct. Well, some of them, the ichthyosaurs, went extinct even before this, but most of them lived right up until that extinction event hit, and uh, that did it for them. After this extinction, marine mammals did eventually fill these ecological roles, and reptiles today are no longer near as common in the ocean as they were in the Mesozoic. Now it's really only sea turtles, sea snakes, and the occasional saltwater crocodile. But why did mammals evolve to take over this niche or these ecological roles? Why didn't land reptiles that were left over after the KPG extinction just go back into the ocean? Similar to how the dominance of dinosaurs kept mammals really small and marginal during the Mesozoic, the opposite was true throughout the Cenozoic. Mammals quickly rose to dominance in the Cenozoic, especially on land, diversifying and adapting to all sorts of environments, and this dominance kind of kept reptiles relatively small, and when mammals then went into the ocean, they kind of did it first and bigger and better, and they just, they did it. They, you know, filled these roles before the reptiles could even think about it. They also already had a lot of characteristics that allowed them to quickly and easily adapt to the marine environment, for example, endothermy, live birth, lactation, and enhanced parental care. And they also had greater evolutionary flexibility due to their diverse genetic and physiological traits um, that really gave them kind of the adaptive potential to take over this marine realm quicker and more efficiently than reptiles could have gone back and done so. But if you want to go back even further in Earth's history, before the Mesozoic, into the Paleozoic, heck, even the very first period of the Paleozoic, I actually have a video talking all about Earth's very first apex predator, and I'll link it up here if you want to check it out. With that, guys, my references are linked down below as always, and I can't wait to see you guys next time. Bye!